What is up everybody, Meriden Gaming here, back for another World of Tanks Tech Tree Tanks Showcase and Review. Today, we're taking a look at the Tier 9 Russian Light Tank, the T-54 Lightweight, which is a stripped-down version of the T-54 Medium Tank. The whole design, very similar. The uh, turret design is a little bit different, but it actually, because of the angles on it, is very good. You're going to end up bouncing a lot of rounds as long as you can stay a hole down. And there are a few angles where even the hull will bounce a few rounds. But yeah, let's go ahead and get over the comparison. So we are going to have the T-54 itself as a comparison, just so you can see the difference between the medium and the light tank. But then the other two on the North American server that I see at Tier 9 are the G-SOR and the AMX-1390. Now the AMX is an autoloader, but honestly, I, I want to have at least three things to compare to, so we threw it in there anyway. All right, DPM, pretty good, better than the other two light tanks. Uh, not quite as good as the medium tank, but of course, you know, it's gonna have a little bit better damage overall. Reload time is where this thing shines as 6.9, which is better than both the others. Of course, the AMX being an autoloader over that six seconds can do 960 damage, but then it has to reload for a while. So, eh, trade off. Then we get down to our penetration 208, which is not great. Um, it's better than, of course, the medium tank and the AMX. G sort considered more of the sniper of the group, so it's got slightly better, but of course, that long reload. And then our shell velocity of 1050, which is pretty good, better than the T54 uh, itself. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and step over to the gold rounds, which is what I tend to use. Now, the good thing is they're both APCR. So that's always handy. So APCR, um, our gold rounds gives us up to 235, which is still pretty low, especially at tier nine. You're gonna have problems dealing with the mediums and the heavies for sure, unless you can get around to the sides or the rears uh, to do that damage. 250 damage, uh, better than the other two light tanks, not as good as the medium tank, but of course it's a medium tank. And finally we get down to our Aim time, 2.11, went up a little bit from the previous tank, but still decent. Anything around two is good. You don't have to sit there and aim in forever, but our dispersion also went up. Uh, the LTTB definitely had much better dispersion and was able to make use of its gun a little bit better. We could probably get this down if you wanna have a gun set up and a spotting set up, but honestly, I, I have not played this yet. This is the one I'm working towards. I, I feel like that's, you're gonna have problems pinning stuff at range with this tank. I'll be able to track them, but that's about it. Gun depression, yeah, five degrees. It's a Russian tank, so surprisingly, the T-54 itself has better gun depression than it does. Definitely don't have as good a gun depression as the g sword or the AMX either. So you really have to make use of the terrain to get those angles to get those shots in, and hopefully you pin them. Speed, now this thing is actually faster than everything else and maintains its speed better. Uh, and of course, the medium tank doesn't maintain speed over the soft terrain quite as well. But yeah, definitely can get into position faster than these other two. And our armor. So against light tanks, there is no equal. 180 turret armor in the front and 120 in the sides. Double, triple, quadruple. These other tanks. Not as good as the medium tank. But... Still respectable, especially with the angles on it. You're going to bounce hot rounds off that turret. Okay, then we get down to our camo. Eh, it's okay. Not bad. Not great. We'll definitely be able to boost that up to uh, what I would consider respectable when using bush mechanics. Uh, and then our view range of 390, which is funny. The medium tank has the same view range. Of course, it's camo. Not quite as good. But yeah, definitely better than the AMX. But yeah, you're still going to have... Definitely boost that up with skills and equipment. So, what are we gonna do here? You know me, camo, brothers and arms, concealment, recon, situational awareness. If you plan on keeping the thing, snapshot and smooth ride, or if you plan on upgrading the crew from this one up into the tier 10, you definitely wanna get those eventually, but for our comparison, we're not gonna use them. Now, our equipment, what are we gonna go for? I'm gonna say standard equipment only, I'm going to go coated optics. You know me. I'm a mobile light tank. I don't like sitting in a bush all day. Uh, if you're going to do that, you can use Binox and a camo net. But for me, that's what I use. Plus, the camo net is kind of not needed. Because once you get your low noise exhaust, 
yeah, you're going to be able to basically using bushes not get spotted all game. All right, so we're going to also use Commander's Vision System to allow us to see through bushes better. So that gets us up to 39 camo, which, like I've stated before, the max is 80. And with proper bush mechanics, you get plus 50, so that's overkill. But for moving, I like having a little bit higher. And then our view range is max view range. Actually, it's more than max view range, so that starts getting us percentages off the enemy camo. Plus the commander's vision system allows you to see through bushes really well. Anyway, let's get over to the gameplay. All right, we're going to be watching Bulldozer and their T-54 Lightweight on, I can never remember the name of this thing, Fisherman's Bay. And you can see he's got two different setups. He's using Vince, Commander's Vision, and Optics here. And running food. I keep forgetting about food, but most people don't tend to run that unless they're really trying to get, like, um, either Marks or Acid or something like that. All right, so going to go ahead and go up into one of the standard light positions here at the edge of the buildings. There's a nice bush for lights to sit in to try to spot the TDs sitting in the B1, B2 area. So he's going into some further up bushes. I don't like these bushes here because you don't have hard cover right there available. So something can manage to wing you before you, your sixth sense goes off, they can finish you off rather quickly. If something has commander's vision systems, if they move up to those bushes or up over like that, they can see you sometimes. Because you're not getting the full bush uh, mechanics here because you're not double bushed. It's probably still good enough. That's a lot of heavy tanks there, huh? Definitely getting all those things spotted. And these guys just can't get... <laughs> they don't know where the light tank is sitting. They're getting spotted and getting hit every time they move. Oh, their T-62 AS died. Okay. I got that thanked him. Managed to get a kill there. Nice. Already at 3,300 spotting damage. Wow. I may have to rethink my uh, strategy here. I may have to move to this position from now on. That's the one good thing about watching this 8 tanker gameplay is you will end up finding positions you didn't know about. I just did like this position because I always felt like if a light tank moved into these bushes over here, either in that position or the one to the left of the house, then they would spot me. But maybe not. And he can, he is close enough to that building now that he can run behind it as long as he doesn't get shot bef in the track before. The six cents goes off. Yep, there it is. Not sure what spotted him. Maybe the G Sor to an angle there near the house. All right, well, 4,000 spotting from that position, not too bad. His loader is down. I'm going to move to this bush. Because it probably was the light tank that spotted him. As you can see, when he goes out wide, he may not have been fully in that bush. Especially if the G-Sword is using... Um, has over max view range and is using Commander's Vision. Oh, nice. The artillery hit him. Track the guy. Starting to do some damage here now that the uh, I spread out some. I'll sit there and didn't need to hit that track wheel, maybe. 
Right, yeah, the pack couldn't even see him. He was just taking a blind fire there at the bush. Okay, can't spot that. What about this guy? Oh, they go unspotted right when he's ready to fire. Oh, there he is again. Can you get him this time? Nope, behind the building. I decided to prepare his loader there. Oh, oh, I saw a little bit of green there. Oh, there it is, there it is, and boom, in the back of the turret. Got spotted by the T-54 there. Stand lit, and yeah, it's not a great position. I think there's an angle from the B area that they could shoot you in the track wheel there. Yeah, that's that's a precarious position here. They can manage to kill off everything up there. He'd be in a little bit of a safer position. Oh, did not fully aim there. Get cover again. Now that medium tank can still shoot him because that his front is a little bit exposed from certain angles here. But they are pushing from that side, so. Cross maybe and see if he can spot some stuff. Oh, oh, oh. I think he's behind. There's like a little. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. There's a little hill right there. Be very careful because there are a lot of spots for enemies to hide. Ooh, Capola. And spotted, yep. Yeah. Like he's down to just the object. So he should be safe here. Gonna shot this iron arny from behind. Oh, ate a shell for that. But at this point, they're getting kind of late in the game. Looks like most of their stuff is in the heavy line. So as long as he can go back here, finish off the arty, he might be able to cap out. Oh, spotted. Got lucky there, not hit by that artillery. Your 10 is still lurking somewhere here in the back. Everything else has been spotted recently, so... Probably a good idea to go finish off the 263. Oh, they already got him. Alright, so he's going to try to flank and probably get the Patton. What I would guess. Already two kills. 1900 damage, not bad. 5100 spotting damage. Definitely learned a couple new positions. At this point, they're just uh, yeah trying to spot for when they come out. There's the E26, the Super Pershing, I believe. I don't think there's an angle through those buildings. I think they're pretty well blocked. And he's pretty much set up defensively to where he can't get dug out unless you really try to come for him. What they really need is for someone to go run interference over in the A7, A8. And then someone down near the buildings, like where the Forest Spirit is, and then he could finish by capping out. Looks like they're going for the no cap kill all uh, mentality here. Yeah, see, that's the thing that, that is the most concerning, is that 279E. If they are an actual good player and not someone that paid to get that tank, trying to dig them out, you're going to end up losing tanks. 
Okay, he's trying to get as far around the corner as he can to, and still be able to spot stuff. 279, he might... There might be an angle from up here. I can't remember. Not now. He has me behind the buildings. Trying to get an angle on the TL7, maybe? If the TL7 is back in... Not look like it. Nice shot there. If the TL7 pokes again, he'll be able to hit him again. Oh, nice, nice. At this point, the enemy are kind of forced to make a play. I can see the 279 trying to yellow or something, maybe. Uh, Sturb is not in a great position. I guess if the T-54 can deal with the TL-7. Oh, nope. That's behind the building. Yeah, he's got to box everyone in here. Nice, they got rid of the TL-7. Patton, he might be able to get a shot in at him. Uh, no pin. Yep, that 2790 is going to be a problem. As they typically are. Because they are very hard for a lot of people to pin, especially if you're not another tier 10. In fact, I'm not even sure. I'm getting lucky there. I'm not even sure if T-54 can even pin him. He's just got to run interference to allow the T-44 to cap out. Nice, T-44 hit him, and come on, get the kill. Nice. And they win the game. <laughs> and it finishes off with the T-79E finishing him off. But anyway, that is not bad at all. Let's go ahead and get over to the end game stats here. All right, so a total of 5,900 spotting. Spotted nine enemies, 2,286 damage, and three kills. Not bad. Oh, and, like I said, running food. Got that second mark. Very nicely done, Bulldozer. Anyway, that's going to be it for today. Don't forget to check me out on Twitch. Same name, Meriden Gaming. Uh, streaming on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Uh, job permitting at 6 Central. And yeah, I'll see you on the battlefield.